Well, praise the Lord, my friend. Welcome to the Power of Faith broadcast. I'm your host, Dr. Charles S. Waters, and standing beside me is the wonderful wife, Rose Amen. Terry. Amen. <laughs> she always has an amen factor on. But um, so glad to have you with me today, babe. Thank you for having me. You had to drag her out here. So like, come on, you're going to do this segment uh, with me. And we are so grateful uh, to have you guys watching today. Now, today is going to be an awesome day, a phenomenal day. We want you to know that God has a blessing in store for you. Now, we've been dealing with living by giving, and uh, I'm so glad that uh, Frazetti's here. We just want to just kind of share, you know, just a little bit of testimonies about how we have gave over the years. Uh, we've given uh, to ministries, we've given to people, and uh, the Lord, even as we speak now, uh, the Lord is just giving us uh, in return everything uh, that we have been investing and two. So, I uh, want you to talk a little bit about what the Lord's been doing with us. Explain to the people how the family of God is on us and our family. We had two daughters. We're a normal family. A lot of people just don't, uh, they, a lot of people just see us in the pulpits or singing or preaching. But we have two beautiful daughters. We live a, a, a regular life just like anybody else. But we believe in giving. And that's what we do. So, talk a little bit about what we you know, some of the things that has happened. The other years, giving to people and families, and what God's doing in this season with us. Amen. Well, um, just being in ministry and even before ministry, God has allowed us mm -hmm. to be able to sow and plant into people personal lives, their ministry, their businesses, and things like that. And through that, even sometimes when we didn't have it, mm -hmm. especially in the beginning stages of ministry, but we knew that. God was going to, you know, give it back to us 10, 20, and 100 times full. So in doing that and believing and walking on faith, to be able to see someone walk in their blessings and their life of abundance has allowed us to now be able to walk in that through our seed of faith that we planted in other people. Now, I like what she said about the seed of faith because every time uh, Terry and I gave or and still give, we do it with faith and expectations. And so I want to take the moment to encourage every couple that could be watching uh, right now. And you may say, you know, man, I, I don't know how to get uh, the favor of God upon uh, my wife and I or your husband and, and, and yourself. And so if you practice some of the keys that we're telling you right now about giving with the attitude and the mentality of faith, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. So we, we have given uh, to family, like you said, mm -hmm. uh, to church, I, I'm telling you, and we love to give. It's not that we uh, give to make a scene. No, we really actually love to give. Quiet so much. Quiet so much. <laughs> so, Sometime, uh, we was at a venue recently uh, with one of our uh, great men of God, uh, Dr. Cook, and uh, he had asked uh, for people to sow a thousand dollars seed. Remember? And, and, and we said, oh my God, man, I, I don't know how in the world uh, can we do it. So uh, long story short, we start making pledges and, and, and uh, everybody began to make pledges. Uh, and, and that's what we have done. And Terry was the first one to whip out her checkbook first. And uh, the Lord put it on her spirit first. And now I was sitting right beside her, but the Lord put it on her spirit. She felt the urge to give, to sow into, uh, uh, at that particular time, into that particular ministry for the favor that is on them to manifest on our marriage and on our ministry. And I believe this, this was happening now. Yes, the, uh, to me, and you know, this is just personal belief, the easiest way to receive a blessing mm -hmm. is to become a blessing. Say that, one more, say that one more time. The easiest way to receive a blessing to is receive. to, yes, is to be 
And to receive a blessing is to be a blessing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times um, when God blesses us, we get this me, myself, and I spirit. Sure. But when you're able to step out of what you need mm -hmm. God to do for you mm -hmm. and be able to supply the need of others, mm -hmm. God will turn around and not only continue to bless that individual mm -hmm. do, through you, mm -hmm. but then you will become a blessing. You will be, be you will be blessed. So sure. the blesser becomes the blessing. I, I like so that. you know, yeah. and and it is not about the amount mm -hmm. or how often. It's really just about being obedient to what God wants you to do um, in a season of planting seeds. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, you know, we always believe that our seed starts first at home. Mm -hmm. But sometimes God will lay it on your heart when, when the need has been met at home, mm -hmm. then you have to go out. It should never be a season where you don't feel the need to plant somewhere. Mm -hmm. One thing about a farmer, they're always planting. Right. Even in the wintertime, right. right. they're preserving mm -hmm. the seed and things like that. And that takes a certain amount of harvesting. True. So even it, it, every day is a season of planting. I know a lot of times we say, this is my planting season, so mm -hmm. now it's my reaping season. Mm -hmm. But if you tr study the true nature of a farmer and what they do and how they harvest and how they preserve, it's a 365-day, 24-hour thing mm -hmm. where God should lay on your heart to become a blessing mm -hmm. to someone else. Now, now, and, and, I, and I like what you said. Now, uh, one of the things for, and I just feel led in my spirit to share this, um, for the women. Can you speak to the women? Maybe there's a pastor's wife that's watching and she's so, or still sowing uh, to her man of God, which is her husband, and it can be a bit challenging. Now, I know for a fact because I watched my wife sow uh, into my life. I mean, this this one, this time, listen, one, one, thing, one thing we have here at New Gen, we don't have a typical first lady who just sit around with big hats and Take a you know seat on the front row and, and uh, you know, uh, <laughs> right, you know, so so but but she so I, I mean sometimes I literally be preaching and she would give a first fruit offering she has sowed seed behind the scenes with expectation and so um, what could you say to the women the pastor's wife that's watching or the business owner's wife that's watching and saying you know I'm sowing but. Uh, maybe I'm not seeing results or anything. What could you say to them that encourage them in this season of sowing? Um, as far as the First Lady sowing, not just into the man of God, um, but a lot of times what we have to do, we have to take ourselves out of our role mm -hmm. and become a, she a, become a sheep. Mm -hmm. We have to become someone that's in need of that word, that's mm -hmm. in need of that revelation. And when you do that, it allows you to become more appreciative mm -hmm. of the word that you're being given. And you sow, you sow into what you believe, whether it be your man of God, whether it be another person within the ministry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God has allowed me, and I don't think it's a unique gift because I believe a lot of women and first ladies possess the same thing. Mm -hmm. Even though I may have an assigned seat or, you know, people call me first lady and things like that, when I come in after my assignment is over, when I'm sitting in the seats, I'm a congregate. Mm -hmm. I'm here to That's receive good. just like everyone else. Mm -hmm. And if something hits home for me or something, you know, ignites something in my spirit, I sow into that. During, mm -hmm. during uh, time when we sow first truth, you know, I have it everywhere. I sow into it. Mm -hmm. And not because I know what's going into the household or it's going into our businesses. I sow it because I want God to do something miraculous in my life. Mm -hmm. So I take myself out of the first lady category mm -hmm. and I put myself into that sheep in need of a shepherd, in need of a word in a revelation category. Mm -hmm. And that allows me to be able to sow. And, and I think that's something that's good. In a few moments, uh, we're going to pray for every pastor. Now I want us to pray for the pastors, their wives, business owners, the CEOs, their wives. Uh, you know, and, and because when you're sowing, and this is one thing that I'm realizing too, uh, and, and, I, and I know uh, my wife would agree, I know you would agree, uh, as we begin to sow, God brought our marriage even closer. Like as days go on. I mean, we've never been distant, but I'm just saying it's getting stronger each week. 
yes. is getting strong. It's like united through the seed. You yeah. know, sometimes when we come together and we say, well, we want to do this for the, we plant seeds within our ministry. We plant seed within other ministries, and you know sometimes we'll come together and say, you know, after we do, you know, our household finances and things like that, we say, okay, well, we're going to do this for the ministry, and we're going to do this for the church, so that even though the money is coming in and, and you know the resources is there, we still want to have our hands person personally upon something uh, within the ministry. So doing that, just to be able to come together in agreement on our finances and how God wants us to bless his kingdom through our finances, it draws us closer because we are planning in something that we both believe in. Mm -hmm. So we both have the same desire to see that become successful. Successful. And that's the way uh, God desires us to live. Now, my wife and I, we're both business owners and we, we uh, uh, God has really uh, been showing us vision, tools in the kingdom through the word of God, right? Yes. Of, of how to be successful in, in, in our Christian lifestyles as a husband and wife. Because these are first principles. This is a priority. And I encourage you for all pastors that are watching this, whether you're watching this uh, by television, whether you're watching this on Facebook, however you're watching this, I want you to know that your, your first priority is your family. She's my first priority. And once I take care of her, and God sees it to take care of her, he'll take care of everything else I put my hands to do. And so as I sow my seed, my first seed goes to sowing my time and love and affection and money, for those who know, you know, you got to support with the finances, uh, into my wife at home, into my children. That's the main thing. Yes. And the first seed planted mm -hmm. is the children. Yeah. You know, that's our seed coming to life. And if we can't implant in them discipline, mm -hmm. life, structure, mm -hmm. faith, you have to sure. instruct and put that in your children. Mm -hmm. We can't come in here and be able to plant that in here. Mm -hmm. We can't go to any other ministry or any other business event or anybody else's table and plant something that we have at first already planted mm -hmm. and seeing the harvest of. Every, every uh, nursery for gardening, tries their seeds first. Sure. So when you go to a, uh, you know, when we go to the Amish country and we go in that little section where we can buy sure. plants and mm -hmm. preserves and things like that, well, before those items hit retail, they have a farm in the back mm -hmm. that they, they test their seed. They test the climate of the soil. Mm -hmm. So before we can present a seed to someone else, we have must first had tried that out in our own life and see what kind of harvest is going to reap us so that we know when they start reaping the benefits of our seed yeah. that their harvest will be just as great. And just as plentiful. Yes. And, and full. And you have the desires of your heart. God desire to bless you beyond your wildest imagination. According to his will. According to his will. And typically, his will, right? Oh, no, that's good. His because will is to see you happy. To see you happy, right? And to see you prosper, right. and to see you live a long, healthy life. Yes. Uh, right here on, on the earth. And um, I just want to encourage you. And, and we, and I love it when my wife comes because, you know, all the time I'm going to see me and I'm going to be so be Me and Deacon John, you know, he holds the camera, holds the fort down behind you guys. But uh, it, it's so good and refreshing uh, because God is doing a new thing. In this season, with our marriage, with our finances, with our ministry, I mean, they talk now, now, now. I gotta talk a little bit about the church. We have sold in tears and in years um, in ministry, and I believe that and I'm sure you pretty much agree. This is the beginning of the greatest season New Generation Ministries has ever had in the eight years that we've been open. Yes. What do what, what you, you think about that? I mean, I, I think so. I think everything works according to God's timing mm -hmm. and, again, according to his will. Mm -hmm. And I believe that, you know, even starting out new generation, it was a concept. Mm -hmm. And then we had to take that concept and make it into a vision. Sure. And then once we made it into the vision, we had to allow God to, you know, anoint the vision and then provide the provision with the people that it took to get this thing manifested. And now, after all the seeds of time, mm -hmm. tears, 
and things like that was planted, now we're starting to see uh, the harvest of that. One thing that I was telling you just yesterday that's so uniquely different about New Generation Ministries is everyone, at least we hope everyone, has a zeal mm -hmm. and a desire not just to see the, the church work, sure. but to see the ministry fulfilled mm -hmm. and see the vision take off, that it can be planted in other places and elsewhere. And the people come in hungry, mm -hmm. wanting to learn the word, wanting to know the ways of God. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't, we, we can't. So much said, we want to learn how did the pastor become successful and how does the first lady become successful and they have children. No, we have to learn the ways of God and when people sure. come in at the God's heart, mm -hmm. through the servant, they create, they have a desire and through that desire it establishes a successful ministry. And that's what we are that's experiencing right now. I'm, I'm telling you, having a ministry of excellence is just outstanding. And, uh, and we're still growing, and God's yes. still molding us and shaping us. We're not perfect, but I'm telling you. We're not grand. We're not grand. <laughs> but, but, but the Lord is, is just really just guiding our footsteps. And uh, coming from a storefront man over on the west side of Baltimore to moving to a facility, I mean, that, that uh, houses 47,000 square feet. And the Lord is just opening up doors where we can just go phase by phase and, and, and just purchasing and just, just watching God work all because we have faith and we are givers and we are living by giving. And so, living by giving. And so, I, I, I'm so grateful that at this time, God is using us to be instruments, not just here, but around the world. And uh, effectively, and uh, what I want you to do, listen, to, this is what we desire for you to do. If I were you, and I'm sure first things are the same way, you need to get down and visit us. We want to talk to you. Uh, for all of our pastors, uh, we love you, thank God for you. Uh, even those who uh, are thinking about uh, or looking for covering or looking for just good fellowship. Because sometimes uh, we, we take we miss, we just kind of, uh, that the whole covering thing kind of. It gets too serious. It gets too serious. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you're just looking for good We're looking for fellowship. fellowship. It's right. about fellowship. It's about fellowship. Yes. And, 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 and to be honest, and you know this for a fact, uh, that many pastors are, that may be looking right now, maybe watching, um, just haven't found good fellowship. Right. And, you know, and they're wives, man. I mean, the wives, my heart, I don't know why. I don't know if it's because you're here or you're watching. <laughs> One of the two. Uh, it's just, I, I, we, we've been here before. We've been there, but we needed good fellowship. Right. And God has given us good fellowship, good people. And uh, we want y'all to be in fellowship with us. And we want to be in fellowship with you. And whatever God has given us, we would like to share that with you. I have a pastor's meeting coming up. Yes. Uh, we, well, you and I. Because okay, uh, yes. we're going to be uh, talking to some pastors and, uh, and their wives. And as we're talking to them, uh, we're going to watch how God work and maneuver in their lives. Because we believe that God is talking and prophetically speaking to the leaders and the shepherds of the houses first. And that's both uh, the wives and the husbands. Yes, it's, bring, it's bringing the unity back in the body of Christ. One of the things that I said to the ladies of love um, Saturday when we was having our meeting, I said, a lot of people don't understand that Christianity has become segregated. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like it's going to take a spiritual civil rights movement mm -hmm. to bring That's the body it. of That's Christ it. back That's to its original form. Yeah. And what came and segregated us is philosophy and denominations mm -hmm. and church sizes and mm -hmm. church cultures and things like that when... It is not destined for us to be that way. Mm -hmm. Before we can really reap the benefits of any seed mm -hmm. or reap the benefits of the harvest of the people coming in mm -hmm. and wanting to learn more of God, we have to bring the body of Christ back together. And you don't do that by, you know, starting a, a country of dictators sure, and things sure. like that. You do that by bringing back wholesome fellowship. Mm -hmm. Know and expect everybody to come with their own ideas, sure. their own desires, their own zeals, and then make up this wonderful body of believers mm -hmm. where everyone is different and uniquely crafted by the gifts that God gives them and that's how the body of Christ will begin to build itself. So in doing this meeting when we say repairing the vision, the first vision is the vision of Christianity which means 
you know, everybody comes in mm -hmm. and everybody is accepted into the will and to salvation in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the first vision. And then God gives each and every, it's like God has a vision for the earth and God gives us this vision of to see all men saved, mm -hmm. you know, and then he gives churches a provision right. to be able to execute the vision that he placed yeah. upon the earth right. when his son died on the cross. Right. So that's the beginning of repairing the vision. And then after that, we want each and every ministry to be different and unique and accept that sure. And, sure. And, and repair that and rebuild that. But then fellowship, knowing that you don't have to try to conquer all of Baltimore City right. and Maryland and D.C. and Virginia and sure. Delaware sure. by yourself. There's a body of believers out here and we're bringing a civil rights movement back into Christianity yeah. and that civil rights movement is all churches were created equal and we're going to bring the word back to where it is and rebuild the vision. I like that. I'm sure. I may be speaking that. It's one, one of the reasons why, this is one of the reasons why I married this girl right here. But I'm telling you, God is, and I like that civil, that civil rights uh, you know, the, Take the segregation war, out, of out of the church. And it doesn't matter if you're a black church. It doesn't matter if you're a white church. It doesn't matter if you have no. five members, or 500 or, or 5,000. Five right. You have a vision. And if right. you didn't have a vision, you would not have a ministry. Right. And, and so I, I wish, you, you know, I, I wish that we could bring the unity back. And, I, and right. I, this is what my wife and I are both agreeing with, with you. For every pastor that are watching, Every church, it doesn't matter, as she just said, whether you have five members or 5,000, God still wants to use you. You are not too big, you are not too small, that God cannot take control of the situation and use you to make an impact. We, we started from nothing, and we're still growing. We're not, like she said before, we're not grand. We're not grand. But God has been using this church and using us because we are humble. We are humble men, and we're young people. We are humble. And, us, and even for you young pastors, be humble. Young, my, my fellow pastors, my brothers, love, if you love your wife, God will love your church. I'm going to say that for you again. If you love your wife, God will love your church because that's your first priority. Your children, your first priority. And then God has increased. Now, uh, we've got a few seconds here. And uh, I, I just feel so overwhelmed, man, just having the first lady with me. And just to know that uh, the Lord is using her to speak. Uh, we'll be meeting with pastors. Uh, the Lord has put this in my heart. I'm going to share this for the very first time on the air. Uh, the Lord has put this uh, in the next couple of uh, 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 weeks. Uh, uh, next couple of weeks, uh, depending on when this comes out or whatever. But uh, the Lord has put a burden on my heart, on my spirit, for pastors uh, not to necessarily cover pastors, but to help them with their vision. Uh, I have a ministry, uh, that, that, an assignment, should I say, uh, about uh, vision repair. Yes. You know, repairing the vision with the vision. That's what it's called. And this is where the Lord is going to use myself and First Lady. I'm going to bring her along because she has word. As you can, as you can see, she has word <laughs> in him. And um, we just want whatever your vision could be so massive. That's fine. But we want you to know that God has a plan for that vision, not to perish, but to actually be resurrected and to do what it's supposed to do. And so we just want to be kind of a part of helping you understand more clearly your vision. A lot of people come to us all the time mm -hmm. and they say, man, it's just an amazing uh, thing to know and to see how God brought you guys and as a young couple to where you are today and still growing. That's because we have vision. Where there's no vision, the people will perish, right? So we're trying to help all pastors, and this has been in my heart. Again, this is not a major covering thing. This is not, oh, we want you to be a part uh, of the Alliance. Sure, we would love to have you be a part of the Generation Alliance of Company Pastors, but even if you do not, we just want to deposit some nuggets of wisdom because maybe God's about to take you to the 20,000 member status and, and God probably keep us at a couple of hundred. I'm still satisfied. We're not jealous. We're not envy. We want you to do what God has called you to do in this season. So uh, you'll be hearing about this in days to come, uh, uh, weeks to come, uh, of repairing the vision with the bishop. With the bishop. And uh, we're going to travel with this. Prayer for me to travel around the world with this. And especially starting here in the Baltimore City area, Maryland, D.C., and all around the U.S. Because uh, God is going to use us in that capacity. Any final okay. words? First thing you want to share? Uh, no, I'm just excited about what God is just doing in the season sure. of, of ministries everywhere. You know, yeah. I believe that 
God's hand is upon a lot of ministries. Sure, absolutely. And so much has happened in the in the Christian faith. Sure. Now God is in the season of re repairing and restoring. Mm -hmm. And I'm just excited. I just sit back and I just be at awe mm -hmm. at what God is doing in this season. Not just through New Generation, but ministries all around the world. Yeah. So I'm just excited. I'm ready to see what more does he have and I'm just ready. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and so are we. So listen to me. I, I want you to get down. It's imperative that you get down here to the Metroplex. Yes. 3501 Grims Lane, yes. Baltimore, Maryland, 21213. Yes. Uh, come down here. We have services every Sunday morning, right? Yes. 11 a.m.? 11 a.m. Every Sunday morning. We have Tuesday Kingdom Building Kingdom Bible, Bible Study at yeah. 7 p.m. That's awesome. Just awesome. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We have newly newly added hour yeah. of power every Wednesday, Wednesday at 12 noon come in get you a morsel of word a morsel yeah. of food yeah, yeah. a nice prayer and, yeah. and hit out and, hit up. and then we have Thursday which is fire night service yeah. come casual come calm just be ready to just have the Lord impact you it, mm -hmm. it's just a high paced service I love it mm -hmm. and, and you know God is doing some awesome things yeah, and, 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 and we want you to get down here we have prayer yes. uh, going on the Second and fourth Saturday. Second and fourth Saturday. I mean, from just from 10 to, 10 to noon. Yes. And I cannot listen to it. I, I cannot. I will be remiss. It will be remiss for me not to mention the Dr. Charles S. Water School of Ministry. Registered. Registered to today. today. Yes. And so we are studying a new course on ecclesiology, uh, which is a study of the church. The foundation. The foundation. Right. Church, no, right? no. Christians. Yeah. Know where we came from and why we are here. And why do we come to church? <laughs> and why do we come to church? Yeah. Know who you are, why we're here, what's our mm -hmm. point? Yeah. You know, the structure of the church, sure. the government sure. of the church, mm -hmm. the judgment of the church. Yeah. These are some of the things that ecclesiology covers. Sure. And, and to me, any Christian, yeah. You know, whether it be, you know, a, a newly convert or someone mm -hmm. that's been in it for years, sure. you know, I always say this mm -hmm. because Christianity is one of those religions, one of the only religions mm -hmm. that we have almost a rite of passage. Like, sure. we weren't born into it. It sure. was a decision that we that made, made of our faith, where a lot of other uh, religions, um, they were born into it. Right. So they are it's natural. It's yes. Natural. And they are well educated sure. on their ministry, sure. their schools, sure. everything. Mm -hmm. So, you know, being in this secular society, we must go back mm -hmm. to our first love, our first works, and get back into the foundation mm -hmm. of who we are, know our godly identity under sure. Christianity. Sure. And, and this is imperative that you get to know that. So register today. Yes. You can look us up on Facebook. We have New Generation Ministries at the Metroplex. Yes. It's on Facebook. Myself, Mr. Charles has Waters. I have a page. Lady yes. Terry Waters, she has a page. Just Terry Waters. Uh, Terry Waters, okay? Just Terry Waters. <laughs> You know, we know them right here. We're not you know, all into the whole big ego system. You know, <laughs> episodic apostles and big, you know, we just saints of God trying to make heaven our home. So, uh, like us, get, on, get online with us. We would love to have you here. So, just remember that what you say today will determine the future of your, of your tomorrow. tomorrow. And, uh, and so, uh, before we close, yes. here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. We're going to pray, okay? okay? For 30 seconds. For 30 seconds, okay. we're going to believe God for whoever's watching, all of you that's watching. We're going to believe God. I'm going to ask Satan to you pray. Okay. And, and uh, we just going to believe God, whatever you need, whether it's healing, whether it's deliverance, whether it's a mother who's going through for a son or yes. her daughter or father that's trying to uh, get his family back together. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe somebody's incarcerated. Whatever your need is, God is a need supplier. Yeah. He will supply your need. So I, I'm, we just, let's just point our hands to the camera. And I want you just to let God use you for a few seconds. Okay. And we're going to believe God for you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Father God, first of all, we just come to you thanking you, yes, oh God, God, for this opportunity, oh God, to yes. speak to the nations, God. Yes, God. Father, as we point our hand to this screen, oh yes, God, Father, God. we are spiritually touching and agreeing, yes, oh God, right with now. those that are out there that right need someone now. in a covenant prayer, yes, God. God. Father, right. any broken hearted that are watching, yes, oh God, we yes, ask God. for the spirit of healing to yes, take place, God. oh God. Right Father, now. even the spirit of poverty, oh God. Yes, Father, Lord. we ask it that the spirit of abundance start to Lord, flow. Right. Right now, right now, oh God. Father, for that ministry, oh God, that mm -hmm. pastor, that first lady, oh God. Father, yes, we God. pray, oh God, that you reignite the Lord, vision, oh God. 
God. Yes, Father, Lord. we just pray, oh God, that you allow yes, a testimony, oh God, yes. to flow, oh God, yes, through Lord. this television screen, oh God. Yes, Father, Lord. teach that we are more than conquerors yes, through Christ Jesus, oh yes, God. Lord. And the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, oh, oh God, yes, but they are mighty Lord. to the pulling down, yeah. oh God. Father, yeah, we God. just pray right now, oh God, yes, that your spirit manifests itself, yes, oh God, Lord. over the yes, airways, oh God. Yes, Touch Lord. someone, oh God, even yes, the person Lord. seeking salvation, oh God, yes, that today Lord. they will be saved, oh yes, God. Lord. To today, oh God, will be the last tears yes, shed, oh God. Lord. Father, we pray for our children, oh God, yes, that you could continue to protect them, oh protect God, them, God, in the schools, oh God. We pray yes, for God. our country, oh God, yes, God, for our government, oh God, yes, that Lord. you will give the decisions needed, oh God, yes, to make God. this a profitable nation, oh God. Yes, and Lord. Father, most of all, we're praying, oh God, yes, for the God. kingdom of God, oh God, yes, that God. it continue to be a light in this nation, oh God, yes, God. around the world, oh God. Yes, Father, God. raise up disciples, oh God, yes, that are God. after your heart, oh God, yes, that want to work according to the powers of you, Do oh God. God. And Father, we pray and we touch it and agree, oh yes, God, Lord. that the visions of this nation, oh God, yes, for Lord. Christianity be repaired in the name in of, the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Amen. 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 Believe it. We Receive it. It is yours. And we'll see you. And thank you so much for sitting to be with me today. Thank you, Pam. And, <laughs> and we love you. And we'll see you next time. You've been watching The Power of Faith. With, I'm your host, Dr. Charles S. Waters. Ladies Terry, Terry M. Waters. Terry M. Waters, yep. Yeah, we're married and all that good fun stuff. We got to go. Our time, <laughs> our time is up. <laughs> yours is. And remember, what you say today will determine the future of your tomorrow. tomorrow. Thank <laughs> you.